one of my first races, uh, I had an incident on track where someone someone kind of pushed me wide. Okay. And technically, it wasn't it wasn't wrong. It was just part of like a racing incident, okay. if you like. You kind of kind of rub each other. Mm -hmm. But I got so angry and so frustrated, and I was way quicker than him. I was at the time maybe okay. half a second. Like I, I he the reason why he was close to me was because I made a mistake. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Me Man Show. We are coming to you from our studio in Riyadh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And today we have the first female from Saudi Arabia in motorsports, Rima Jafari. Thank you for finally making the time to come to our studios. My my absolute pleasure to be here. Okay. Uh, and thanks for being patient. Oh, well, that's 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 actually one of my biggest qualities in life is is patience. Patience is virtue, right? All good things come. I can't say the same. Can't say the same about myself. I'm. Uh, I have to work on that. Patience yeah. is something that I'm having to learn to come to terms with. But okay. I'm not maybe the most patient person. Well, you can learn to be like a faucet, either hot water, cold water. water. So yeah, we'll yeah. see how that goes. <laughs> I, and uh, let's 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 jump into things. So. You established Viba Motorsports. Could you share the story behind its creation and what made you want to start this new team? Yeah, so I mean, to tell you a little bit about Viba, I'd have to tell you, um, I mean, obviously starting racing, it's been four or five years now that I've been into it. I kind of threw myself into the deep end, mm -hmm. learned as I went, you know, Go, I mean, as I was going, whether it was on track, whether it was just understanding the whole industry, um, everything was new to me. So I, I was probably overwhelmed for a whole year initially getting into it and understanding. And it probably took me a few years to understand what it takes to to be a racing driver, to go racing um, uh, and, and just to be comfortable in that setting. Um, but at the same time, when I was kind of going into this and, and it was new for me, it was new for a lot of people here in Saudi as well. I had questions, you know, being asked, you know, how, how do we do it as well? What's your advice? Can you can we be a part of your team? And at the time, I was just me and myself kind of yeah. trying different things. Me, uh, myself and I. Me, myself and I, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just learning as I went on and 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 their questions and their need to um, you know, want to be involved or want to be a part of what I'm doing is what really made me start this team. So uh, in racing, you can race for a team. Ideally, you, you know, you generate sponsorship and that funds your, your seat in the team, but it doesn't mean that you have to own your own team. Uh, but the purpose of the team was really to get people and create a platform for them, uh, a place for them to come and learn and be a part of motorsport and mm -hmm. have a hands-on experience so the idea is we want to offer training programs um, mentorships um, get people on the ground and be a part of uh, be a part of the team and, and also um, be able to communicate that Saudis are able to be you know or are capable if you like to be competitive at this level mm -hmm. and and the aspiration is really to be not just uh, a Saudi team with Saudi talent, but to be competing at the international stage and, and winning uh, at the international stage. So that's my my hopes and dreams. And, and initially it was a personal thing. And, and now I'm looking, you know, to, to share the experience and, and, and really uh, bring everyone along in the journey. All right. And, and, and uh, through that process, what was like a key learning that you thought was critical for someone to know if they wanted to get into this? There are a lot of unforeseeable costs. <laughs> okay. I think that's 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 one. Um, I mean, we're going into anything, any investment, any entrepreneurial venture. Um, I feel like the most important thing is you have to love it. You have to really, you know, want to spend every waking moment on it um, and dedicate time. So I think that is something that I was happy to do. But of course, along the way, there was some disappointment. There was some um you know are we doing this right um uh are we you know we're uh, as as far as it goes we ha and team and sport in general you kind of have to create um an archive or history and mm -hmm. then from that you build on and that's how you build on success you need to have experience and then 
learn from that and then hopefully um, grow and, and, and be competitive. Um, so it's, the, again, it has to do with patience, right? So right. I'm... Um, Patience find, is virtue. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding that, you know, we can assemble. We have a great team uh, at Diba and we can assemble all the right people, but having the time and the, and the capacity to gather all of this information and then translate it into on-track success is not as, you know, not as easy as I thought it was going to yeah. be. I didn't think it was going to be easy, but it's much more complex than Let's I just thought. say you didn't expect it to be... Uh, I guess you thought it would be more seamless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought I thought it would. I thought there would be, um, uh, there would be a bit more. Um, there would be clearer variables along right. the way. If you like. Okay, and and being the first uh, woman to get into racing, I'm sure you know it wasn't like you know easy because it's not like you're 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 following the footsteps of somebody who's done it. Or there's a policy or procedure, as you just said. So how did your upbringing shape your journey into the world of racing? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, you know, I think a lot of you who I am and, and, and how I think and how I operate comes from, of course, you know, where, what my, how my parents kind of brought me up and okay. the values they instilled in me. And, and one of the things I feel like I didn't recognize when I was younger was kind of the room they uh, they gave me in order to kind of explore new things to mm. maybe make mistakes to i was like i was a young girl who loved adventure who loved sports right. and who who you know wanted to challenge i always wanted to challenge myself i always wanted to try new things and at the time you know there was there were some avail- like there were some things that you could do and and available to you like uh, whether it's a club or after school club but uh, other things you kind of have to seek out yourself mm. or really you know need the help of your family to 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 put you into in touch with the right people in order to um to find these new avenues and i think that sort of independence and and room gave me the the confidence i needed um at that young age and and allowed me to to um to make these kind of challenging um and and maybe uh, take a, a bit more um risk maybe if you like at a younger age that when i you know was in university and when i was um you know at a different stage of my life wanting to explore more of the world i i wasn't scared i was you know i was like okay this is available what i, I want to try tennis i mm-hmm. want to go camping i want to you know uh, it was a lot of to do with activity but i kind of threw myself into these situations and, and learned as i went so i think that really helped especially being in a place where it, it's racing is unfortunately still very male dominated mm-hmm. and um here in saudi growing up in saudi you when you wanted something or you liked something you really had to like believe in it in order to continue yes. to do it and that you know uh, confidence that i that i had from that young age helped me in this world of racing that's you know you, you i unfortunately still do stand out and okay. that um that didn't feel so unnatural because I felt like that's something I experienced um, growing up here. And, mm-hmm. and so, so, I mean, the question I could, I can keep going, but I think as a whole, I think it was, they gave me the room and the space to find my passion, to find myself. And, um, and they didn't really limit me to um, what they thought I should do, you know, okay. and, 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 at the end of the day, when I did decide to go racing, uh, it wasn't something that I was talking about with people. It was such a big decision for me because it was, I was at a crossroads in my life. I, I had left a job and I was coming back to Saudi. And yeah. What was um, the job, if you don't mind me asking? Yes, or uh, the career, I the guess, career. before so the I was ship. in finance. So I was in, right. uh, working in finance and moved back to Saudi to start uh, uh, um, a new business. Mm-hmm. Um, and... The, obviously, it was it was some starting something from scratch. So again, it needed investment, it needed time. So uh, at the time, my business partner had cold feet, and uh, you know I'm like, wait, wait. If you're having cold feet, then give me three months. I need to explore this this thing that I've been you know really it's been on my mind for so long, and this was racing. So those three months, um, I basically went to get my racing license. 
which was in the UK at the time. I went and it was what I, the people that I knew there were like, this is how you do it. This is the, uh, you know, A step, A, B, C, easy, easy, uh, easy process. So I, right. I went to do that um, and then started doing track days and, and uh, just exploring it for myself. And that's, and that's when I realized like being on track, being behind a car, like th I want to do more of this. I want to, um, how can I, you know, how can I be better at this? And so I went from that to uh, eventually the following year, um, signing up to a race in the, in the UAE. Um, and at that stage, I still hadn't told anyone. I still, it was still, again, I, I guess I was so, um, I was so, worried that I wouldn't go through with it and yeah. I was so I didn't want other people's opinions or concerns or worries to affect my decision okay uh eventually I found the coach I found you know I I, I gathered basically the information I needed in order to go racing and at that stage it was like six weeks before my first race and I told my family I'm like uh at the time I was also 26 so I wasn't like you know pretty I, I showed that I could be responsible you know okay. I had a stable job then so um, I went to them I was like by the way I'm just gonna you know g give this thing a shot I want to go racing in the week on the weekend and and see how it goes and um, and I and I really hope that you would support me okay. and uh, there was silence definitely to begin mm -hmm. with um, and sometimes silence is an answer, you know, it's not a no yeah. for me. So I went with it uh, my mom was quite supportive. And, um, and I told very few people and I was like, I don't want to make this a thing. This is more for me and I'm finally kind of doing the thing that I've been dreaming about. And um, in the end, people did end up coming and there was uh, some media there and, um, and it turned into something much bigger, much yeah. bigger than I anticipated. and. Um, yeah, it felt, it felt overwhelming, but, mm -hmm. um, it was a feeling I had never felt before, you know, doing, being in the racetrack for the first time, experiencing a race for the first time, you know, the, I, I didn't finish in such a bad as well, bad results. So that was also very cool. Yeah. What'd you get? Do you remember? I came second, uh, in one That's race and third in the other. That was your first, right? Like that your first, my first experiences. Yeah. My first race. It was a, it was a, in, let's say amateur championship. So I everyone else was first outing that's pretty impressive yeah yeah it was encouraging and and it was really the support everything i received i mean like going from just this is my personal dream to it becoming everyone else's you know everyone else knows about it everyone else yeah. is supportive and and so supportive in that it felt overwhelming i'm like wow okay what is what is this what what does this mean you know and mm -hmm. and after some time i i realized i'm like if people are, you know, um, now people know about what I'm doing and, okay. and there there's a sense of responsibility. And I felt like if I needed I needed to do it justice and in order for me to do it justice, I needed to learn. I needed to prepare properly. I needed to learn how to raise property. And that's when I decided to move to the UK um, or to not move, but to race in the UK. Okay. And set and up your training camp. Set there. up my exactly. And, right. and, and learn with the young young boys effectively and yeah. throw myself into the deep end and, and that and that really that made my decision to take this on a more professional level was only because of all the support i received it was because i felt like i needed to do right by it okay and uh you know while you were explaining this you, you're set you're saying that this was something you wanted to try and this has been a long dream of yours mm -hmm. so how long has this been a dream of yours yeah, it's a it, long, um, I guess is relative, but it was probably my second year in university. So yeah. I was probably now maybe 12, 12 years, not 12 years ago. That's okay. 2011. So, so around university time. Around university. It wasn't like a childhood dream. No, no, no. It was around right. university. It was basically how I came across it even was I was a big sports fan. Okay. I mean, football. Um, I, at the time was probably the most sport I followed. But when I moved to Boston in the U.S., the U.S. are like avid sports fans. They have mm -hmm. a million, ten different teams, and everyone yeah, of course. is like everything is sports. Everything <laughs> is sports. So yeah. I got into that. So I followed basketball. I followed football, and then I came across somehow. I came across Formula One. It was one of my trips into the U.K. Yeah, and I was like, wait, I love cars. I've always loved cars, mm -hmm. and this seems like it's also it, it 
connects both my passions of cars and sports. So let me see what it's about. And I was watching Formula One and didn't understand a thing. Okay. Um, I was taking notes while I was watching. I was like, what does this mean? What does that mean? Research this. Like things were so complex and complicated. I didn't really, didn't initially go into, mm. oh, I like what I see. It was just, it seemed so vast overwhelming yeah va- right because oh, yeah. you're just, just like you're trying to understand it and grasp I'm, it i'm trying exactly <laughs> exactly and eventually i started following it and 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 understanding okay this is what makes a good team this is what this driver is good i think you know like mm-hmm. not, not quite sure but it was the one race in particular that drew me to racing which was the 24 hours of le mans yeah it's an endurance race um and i know pretty well so it's, it's a very intense kind of intense race. and all the the top manufacturers drivers race against mm. each other there and what made what opened my eyes to that this is a possibility that i can actually go racing is looking at um the podium there was a gentleman that was probably my dad's age all right. and not particularly fit um you know he he and, and I could see. I was like, "Wow! If that guy can do it, then I must be able to do it." So okay. it was again, and like I tell this to people, like if you have, it is basically you have to see it to believe it. And I only saw Formula One drivers that that also seemed so unreachable, so you know, like an impossible dream. So I never actually thought of and dreamt of being a Formula One driver. I just thought of actually endurance racing. I could get into that, and I could still be in like my fifties and forties and still be competitive and still win so that was the first seed that kind of you know that made me think of racing as a potential thing i can do on the side again i didn't think of it as a full-time professional okay. thing so if i if i wasn't exposed to you know or didn't educate myself if you like um or expose myself to different things then I probably wouldn't be here today because I would have just thought, oh, this is impossible. You know, why w- I wouldn't be able to be it. And the reason, again, just to explain that why I didn't dream of being a Formula One driver is in Formula One, the, the drivers start from such a young age. They start from... Yeah, it's eight. a way of life. You it's, gotta, yeah, y- yeah. Y- you, you um, basically groom the yeah. a- athletes. You groom the athletes. There's only 12, 20 drivers in the world. Yeah. They're groomed from the ages of 8, 6, some of them. Yeah. And they break into Formula 1 at 17, 18. You know, and I was already 26, so mm-hmm. that was not possible for me. And, and I, I would like to think that I'm a realistic person. So I thought, what's the goal that I can aspire to? And yeah. This was this was a dream that I'm like okay, Le Mans, let's uh, let's let's dream of that. So here I am, still trying to achieve that, and mm-hmm. um, um, still hungry for it. Well, that's this is very interesting because it shows your perseverance. Because yes, you you do get groomed at a very young age, and I remember when I interviewed Jake Jake Dennis, who's mm-hmm. a Formula E racer now with mm-hmm. Team Avalanche Andretti. So he was giving me a background about his training, which he started at a very early yeah. age at eight and sacrificed like basically having a, a life as a child yeah. you know to to become a racer yeah. and you know since you know you threw yourself into you know um into racing and everything what insights can you share with us about training preparation you know like what does your daily or weekly training routines look like yeah um i can definitely tell you a little bit about that but to give you an idea i mean it, it's it's a Two, the core principle is you do endurance training and you do strength training. And the reason why we do that is when you're driving the car, you're, uh, other than having the strength to hit the pedals, other th- than having the, the, the core stability to keep you, you know, in the, in the seat, comfortable, um, just able to hold the forces, the car is turning at high speed. So the G-forces in, in single seaters or in formula cars, they're much higher, so you need to train your neck up. Mm-hmm. Your my wrists were even something I might you know just grip strength was another thing I needed to train. Um, and in GT cars, it's it's much more endurance. So you're in the car sometimes for two hours at a time, yeah. um, and you do that a few times. Sometimes it's it's and it's very demanding on not just your physical but mental. Uh, so your your focus and your attention is a very big thing. So I'm I'm in the race everything is split seconds it's 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 seconds and i have to make decisions under pressure and and in 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 an environment that um doesn't allow for tiredness doesn't allow for a lapse in judgment i mean that happens of course because 
in the end um, we're we're humans uh, humans have always you know, we make errors have make 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 mistakes but the idea is how can i be as balanced in the car as as i possibly can so i mean one of the things let's say as a, a my week would be when i'm not racing so at the moment my off season so will be probably two to three strength uh, sessions a week and maybe four cardio sessions and I mean, with, you have to get creative sometimes because the things get a bit, you know, monotonous and repetitive. So I do running, cycling. Um, at one point I was, you know, even training for a triathlon because I, I needed to mix up my training a little bit. Yeah. But, um, but I also work on, like, my reactivity. I also work on my focus and my attention. Um, uh, to, put it, to put into, like perspective how important it is not to lose your cool if you like or or to be uh as calm and as as fit in the car when when i started racing one of my first races uh i had an incident on track where someone someone kind of pushed me wide okay. and technically it wasn't it wasn't wrong it was just part of like a racing incident yeah. if you like you kind of kind of rub each other mm -hmm. but i got so angry and so frustrated and i was way quicker than him i was at the time maybe yeah. half a second like i i he the reason why he was close to me was because i made a mistake mm -hmm. so i just had to effectively like correct myself a little bit and then go on with my driving and kind of focus on eyes ahead you know, don't look in your mirrors. Just do what you know you yeah. need to do. Do what you got to do. Do it, exactly. Yeah. And what I did was I, l I got angry. I okay. lost my temper mm -hmm. in the car. And what it's what they call red mist. So all you see is like, and I'm just angry. I was frustrated. Okay. So because of that, that, effect, that affected my judgment. So instead of breaking where I would usually break, I break too late. I turned in too late. At one point into the lap, I, I even spun because of how I basically disconnected I was from myself. Yeah. So I wasn't able to drive. It took you off your game. Completely, it threw me off. Yeah. And I had promised myself after that incident that I will never ever allow anything that happens, even if it's his fault, my fault, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I will never let anything get to me like that because the, the, the name of the game is getting to the finish line first. Yeah. It's not making a mistake because of because you allowed something to affect you and and things like this have you know seeped into my my life like now you know real traffic is notorious you know how do i keep yeah. a cool head and I, I can do that you know maybe not mm -hmm. all the time but it's a Listen matter to some nice music I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, a, have a good conversation i guess sometimes helps yeah. as well but <clears throat> um but it means it's like some of the things that i've learned on track like mm -hmm. this has really helped me in life and and making me a bit like calmer making making me i even say sometimes it slowed me down yeah um that i'm no longer as reactive i'm i've i'm taking the skills i'm learning on track and and what works for me on track also somewhat applying it to um to life and and and, and that's made me uh, definitely a more balanced person yeah. i would say so you become more zen yeah, I think I think I would say I've become I've definitely become more Zen. Actually, yeah, yeah funny enough, I would say I've I'm, I wouldn't call myself Zen, but I've 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 I'd like to say I'm Zen right now. So, yeah, you know, like, I so mean, you're, you're, you're definitely uh, creating a, a great space for me to, to have a conversation. And so um, yeah. that that helps definitely. Okay, but, well, um, I'll take that as a compliment. You yeah, know. some, some people call me the guest whisperer. You okay. Know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, all right. So, you know, you what is the most memorable moments in your career? I mean, because obviously just from listening to you, you really love this. Yeah, you know, it's, I do. It's, it's like it's it's not like, you know, if some if you could find a way to do it for free, I think you would do it for free. You know, what I, mean? I, w I would, but that's not an option anymore. Yeah, so. of course, it's not an option. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if we're in the yeah. fantasy land yeah. world yeah. of racing and. Yeah. You know, you blink your eyes and you open them like the, you know, that, that old I Dream of Genie TV yeah. show. Yeah. 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 And a car pops up and you can race for free. Uh, yes. You know. in, in a dream world, for sure, I would. Yeah. yeah I would. I would be, I'd be really happy doing what I'm doing. And, um, uh, yeah, it would be without a doubt. You know, I, I am where I want to be. It's just mm -hmm. how can I continue to be um, doing what I love 
and, yeah. and, and that's that's the challenge as well. And what memories do you carry My with memories, you to make yes. you feel that way? So there's, I mean, I can't pick one, so I'll have to give okay. you, you can pick from, from the, the I gave you. I said, give me examples. examples. I didn't say one. Okay. One's kind of okay. difficult. Yeah, you know? it's super difficult. So mm -hmm. I'd say my, the first one is probably my first race, which okay. was super overwhelming, but it was also the first time I'd ever experienced being in a race, um, you know, feeling the adrenaline, being on the podium. Like there was many firsts on that day. So that was sharing with my family. Like it was um something i'd never experienced before so that level of happiness and excitement was was new um my first 24 hour race as well so i did the 24 hours of dubai um 2022 and uh, actually finished in second in our class which was a great result and top 10 um but experiencing a 24 hour race is a whole different ball uh, ball game you're you're talking about long hours you're talking about uh, working under um, different scenarios and it just it just really took me took me by surprise but I I, I loved it and and the last one um, would probably be our first race as a team with mm -hmm. Diba um, we came out uh, and we won on our debut so all right very proud moment that one too okay well, that's, that's that's cool anyways well I'm I'm gonna stop asking you about motorsports because okay. you know like I, I, I want to know who Rima and Jafali is like so outside racing what are your hobbies what do you like um I I like the outdoors I really enjoy I mean yeah? I'm based I'm from Jeddah so the sea is something I've always loved I like going diving going fishing like those are things that really like make me feel grounded and and bring me back to earth sometimes and when I need to to come back to earth from the the crazy crazy life of a of a racing driver but mm -hmm. um I also enjoy hiking. I All enjoy, right. uh, I do these, ch like I kind of go on tw twice a year, go to and do these training camps in the mountains and go like climbing and, and just try and get as high as possible for the for the few days that I'm there. And it really gives me a nice um, kind of change to what I'm used to being in the city, being in racetracks. It's, sure. it's, it's nice being in nature. It gives you like this kind of peace of mind and it's a good reset, a really good reset for me. So those are a few, but I, I, I there's a lot of other sports and other things I, I enjoy. Outside well. sports and outside you know, sports outdoors, and you know, outdoors. Like, do, do you watch movies? Do you like music? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, it's same. yeah, music. Would Everyone has these guilty pleasures, you know, yeah, so it's okay to sure. have one. I mean, know? I probably <laughs> read, I read quite a lot recently, more recently. I've yeah? been getting into a bit of like nonfiction. I mix it up between nonfiction and fiction. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been a nice way to, to keep busy, but not like so stimulated. Um, mm -hmm. I I definitely enjoy music, so I'll, I'll try to go and you know attend some live music um, events a year. Whether like it, bands. I would say more soul. I'd say uh, I, I my current favorite is probably Leon Bridges. He's like a jazz soul artist. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm, I mean there's. Good food can that be one of them? I love I love to explore, um, you know, different cuisines. And um, so, have you ever seen this podcast before? I have. Yeah. 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 yeah I have. I've watched a few episodes, and mm -hmm. it was nice. I thought like some of the guests I'd never heard of before. I mean, I've heard of them, but never um, heard them speak or okay. heard their story, if you like. So it was nice to to hear that and and to connect with. Yeah, other Saudis and and even other other people that I had not come across. So mm -hmm. I think I liked the. Uh, yeah, it, for me, it was really nice to be a part of uh, a group of people so diverse as well. Um, yeah. Your guests, I think. So hopefully, I can add something to that. And uh, you know, you so you, you know you f you you follow Arab news. You've been interviewed by Arab news. Uh, you know, through the duration of your career. What do you think of of basically the current initiative that is happening in this era for Arab news being more digital? Mm -hmm. I, I think, I mean, it's the future. And yeah. in the end of the day, um, me coming into this industry of racing, I didn't realize that it has to, you know, a lot of it has to do with publicity. It has mm -hmm. to do with, you know, connecting. Um, and I have, I have so much respect for, you know, everyone in, in PR, journalism, PR, comms. Like it mm -hmm. is 
a mission. Yeah, well, the, yeah. the host always likes to say he's the rowdy Saudi who likes to say howdy. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, before we wrap up this interview, I always ask my guests, yeah. what is your personal message to the Arab news audience and Mayman show audience tuning in, whether they are reading, watching, or listening, because we're on all platforms. So my advice would be, um, in order for me to go racing, mm -hmm. I needed to get out of my own way. Okay. Uh, I needed to go into the unknown, and I needed to challenge myself. So that's what I would say. I would say, you know, do things that sometimes make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, um, experience new things, put yourself out there. Um, it, it doesn't hurt to try and you'll, you'll have the answer if you, if you do try it. And, mm -hmm. um, I probably wouldn't be here if I didn't, you know, knock on many doors, um, uh, you know, fail in some things as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that, that's my advice. All right. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty good advice. I mean, perseverance goes a long way and trial and error mm -hmm. is good. Failing yeah. is also a learning experience, but never giving up, that takes a lot of character. Yeah. There's another another one I like, failing. This is not my quote, so okay. I, I won't say it, but it's fail, mm -hmm. fail again, mm -hmm. and fail better. Okay. Think. Well, that's yeah. good. That's good. I mean, we can sit and do this uh, all night long, but we got to you know, wrap up the interview and find uh, a way to get home with all this traffic outside yeah, yeah. and I'd like to thank you very much for you know taking the time to be on our show and in our studios and to just uh, before we wrap up our interview to get back to what, the sentiment that you were saying a mentor of mine used to say if you're not working you're not failing yeah. so that's just like how that. it goes and uh, be sure to tune in to the one and only Mayman Show. See you later.